guys, this is Amy with Ask Amy. Today we are with Terry. He's one of our plating specialists and he is going to show us how to go plate onto a pre-nickel um, plated item using our universal plater. Terry. Um, the universal plater is uh, one of our very popular machines in that it is universal because it will gold plate with gold, it'll gold plate with nickel, it'll gold, it will plate with copper. And uh, to demonstrate the basic operation of it, I'm going to um, gold plate one side of this nickel plated fishing lure. And I, I took it right out of the pack. The only thing I've done to it is remove the hook. Now to set the machine up for gold plating a nickel item, what I've done is I've put my electro clean solution that comes with the kit into the first beaker. I put my surface activator solution into the second beaker and I put my gold plating solution into the third beaker. For the pre-treatment uh, process, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my voltage to just over 6 volts. Right now it's like 6.2 volts. Now if you have a, a nickel plated item, it's very easy to gold plate with the universal plater using these three basic steps. In fact, these three basic steps really apply, the, the, the process applies to a lot of different plating scenarios. So because this is electroplating, we do need to provide an electrical charge to the piece that we are plating. And to do that, we use what we call the common lead. And I just find some obscure place to hook it, and I'm going to hook it in the hole here. And that securely holds the part and provides the electrical charge. Now, if the, the very first step we need to do is we've got to prepare the surface to receive the pretreatment and the plating process. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a little bit of water on here. And you'll see that the water beating off there just like almost like a a car after you've waxed it. The water beads up. The surface is not wetting out. You can see the, the beading going on and the, the water just runs right off. What we want to do is we want to treat the surface so that the plating solutions can come into more intimate contact or, or wet out better. And so to do that, the first step of the process is our electro cleaner. And the electro cleaner is a, you can think of it like a super cleaning solution. Now, even if I had washed this uh, part with soap and water, it still would not wet out. It would do a, it would beat off, the water would beat off about like it is here. What happens if you plate it when the water is beating up like that? What can happen is you can have, it may go well in some areas and it may not go well in others, but it certainly would reduce the likelihood of having good overall adhesion and a good consistent layer. And so it's just like if you were going to paint your walls at home, if you didn't clean them properly, you know, the, the paint might peel off here or there. It's, having the surface perfectly clean is always a good idea for any, any kind of coating, whether it's painting or electro cleaning. Now when I electro clean, I'm just going to go over the surface and you'll notice a very light gassing. I, I hope you can see that. It's like a little bit of foaming going on. And that's bubbling that is created by the electrical current and the electro clean solution. And I'm going to spend probably maybe 30 seconds on a piece this size. And the good thing is, is after I'm uh, done the electro cleaning, I'll be able to tell if I've done a good job. Because I'll take my rinse water and remember how the water beat it up. Now the water, when I spray the water on there, see how it just sheets off oh, yeah. perfectly well. And if I could see a little area, like let's say a little area up in this corner, well, if, if the water beat it off or if that even dried a little bit more quickly, then all I would simply do is just take the electro cleaner and hit that spot again. For some reason, there was some type of material on the surface of that metal that was preventing the water from wetting out and accessing the surface. Nice. 
Okay, so for the next step, we're still going to leave the voltage the same, and we're going to use our surface activator solution. And the way to think of the activator is some people think of it as like a primer. Some people call it an etch. Uh, I, I guess that could be so. It doesn't really etch the surface, but it does remove any oxide, any material that would prevent adhesion. And if you were to try to plate onto a surface without properly activating it, not only does the the plating, whether it's gold or copper or nickel, go more slowly, it's likely that it may you may have an adhesion problem. You know, what we want to do is we want to make sure that whatever we're plating onto the surface sticks very well. After the activation, I'm going to rinse again. And again, I'm, I'm rinsing with distilled water. Uh, if we use regular tap water, you know, different parts of the country have really hard water with a lot of calcium or minerals in it that can leave something on there that could affect the plating layer. So distilled water is cheap. You buy it at the grocery store. It's about a buck a gallon, and it's well worth the investment to make sure you've got a, a, a very clean, pristine surface to plate onto. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the voltage. Right. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, what do we have to have a spray bottle to get to rinse it, or can I just have a bowl of water with the deal sealed water to kind of dip it in? What's the best technique? Yeah, that's a great question. If if I were doing a lot of these uh, fishing lures, I would probably have a uh, a beaker or a bowl that I could just dip them into to rinse them afterwards. Uh, that that's very effective. In fact, with our Immersion unit, the Jewel Master, we would have rinse beakers where you would dip the part or even a whole rack of parts in there to rinse. So that, that is a really effective. Um, for doing one item as a demonstration, uh, a little spray bottle works great, but a lot of people might not even have access to one. Now for gold plating, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the voltage down to, oh, I'm going to go to about 4.3 volts. And another thing that's important, now that I've activated the surface, the surface is chemically active and the oxygen in the air would react with it. And so it's important for me to, to continue with the plating operation before it can dry out too much. If I let it dry out, it, 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 I wouldn't want to go to lunch and then come back and try to plate it. If I did, I would want to reactivate it again. And if I were doing a very large piece, I would probably only want to activate one area and then plate it and then activate another area and plate it. So you don't want to have too much time elapse between activation and plating. Okay, now we've uh, got our gold sleeve here. Our voltage is turned down to about 4.3 volts. And so I'm going to reclip that just so it holds a little more firmly. We'll pick our handle up. Now I want you to notice how quickly the gold goes on the surface. And when the gold becomes opaque, like it has right there, you put on three to four millionths of an inch, or we often call it micro inches. What does opaque mean? Opaque means that you can no longer see the silver through. The, the, it, the surface is gold. And a normal decorative gold plate is going to be anywhere from seven to 10 micro inches or millionths. And so however long it took me for this piece to become opaque, I want to spend two to three times as long to put a good, normal, decorative gold plate on this lure. Now, I, I suppose for some types of fishing, you would want the lure to be gold on one side and silver on the other. I don't know. You could go through and do the same, exactly the same process and plate the back of the lure. Now, another question is people say, well, how do you plate under the clip? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the clip momentarily and plate where the clip was. Is that going to scratch my gold or anything? Probably not. The, the clip is, is a copper clip. Um, it's, it's also nickel plated. You might want to be careful if you were doing the emblem on a car. You, you want to be careful about where you make contact. I usually try to do it in a corner or some area where... It's kind of out of the way because, uh, yeah, you don't want to scratch a perfect, pristine finish. 
I like this fishing lure because the uh, the hammered surface kind of shows the texture. It shows the color of the gold very well. Now sometimes my gold doesn't look quite as shiny as that. It comes on kind of like a dark, dull color. Yeah, one thing that can happen is if, you're, if your voltage is too high, let's say I had forgot to turn the voltage down to uh, 4.3 volts from 6 volts, and I tried the plate, the gold would be dark and dull. You know, maybe I'll just, on this very tip, maybe I'll try that just for the fun of it. I'll turn my voltage back up to uh, a little over 6 volts. And this is the effect, and I'll do it only on the very end here. Um, and the gold turns dark and dull. See, is that kind of what you're talking yeah, about, Amy? Yeah, exactly what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, that's a classic over-voltage uh, condition. And the nice thing is uh, that's very easy to repair. You can take a little bit of baking soda, make, soda, mix it up into a paste, and put it on a paper towel, and that will polish out, and it will be just as beautiful as the rest of the part. Oh. And so it's easy to fix, but it's better to avoid it. And so we want to make sure that when we're plating, we've got the voltage set at the correct plating voltage. And for an item like this, that's going to be anywhere from four to four and a half volts. But, you know, like I say, I'm going to do it about 4.3 volts. So there we go. We've uh, we've gold plated the fishing lure. And like I said, a lot of the principles and and concepts involved in plating a simple item like this is something that would be very important in utilizing any process for your universal plater. And I want to remind everybody that we have a lot of technical videos and we're putting more 